Standing on the promises of Christ, my King, through eternal ages let His praises ring. For in the highest I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God, I'm standing, standing, standing on the promises of Christ. shall continually be in my mouth. Thank you so much for joining us at Shiloh Baptist Church on this Father's Day, this the Lord's Day. Amen. For those of you who are joining us in the sanctuary, as well as those of you who are joining us by Facebook, YouTube, and or live streaming, God's richest blessings be upon you. Happy June 10th weekend and happy Father's Day, certainly to all of our fathers. Let me share a few housekeeping matters and then we will move into the very purpose for which we have gathered on this, the Lord's Day. Do remember that on this coming Tuesday at the seven o'clock hour, we will have our Sunday school uh, lesson. And of course, it's virtual. You are certainly welcome to share in our Sunday school lesson on Tuesday at the seven o'clock hour. Our area is coded high with COVID. And so the new variant is moving around. So my word to all of us is for us to do all that we can to protect ourselves and certainly to protect others. You may be aware of the very fact that uh, at the end part of the week, the CDC has approved COVID shots for the younger population, those who are of the age six months to preschool. And this impacts some 18 million youngsters uh, who are in need of the shot. Pfizer um, is administering it and so is Moderna. With Pfizer, there are three shots and the dosage is about a tenth of the adult dosage and with Moderna, there are only two shots and the dosage is about a fourth of the adult dosage. So you might be wondering, um, I'm sure more information is coming out this week, um, probably the best place for you to turn is to your pediatrician and or your physician and they will uh, connect you with the places that will have Pfizer and Moderna. Uh, many of the persons are saying, those who are uh, medical persons, are saying that whichever one is administered, for God's sake, take one. Uh, so don't worry so much about whether it's Pfizer or whether it's Moderna, but go forward uh, and take the one that is offered. As we have our prayer time, we certainly want to remember all of those whose names are part of our sick and our shut-in list. And we especially want to remember um, Mother Freddie LeMay, who was in the hospital a portion this week. And she um, was returned home at the end part of the week. And she has said to me to make sure that I say to you, thank you for your prayers and keep praying for her. I want to remember in prayer Sister Wilma Burwell, uh, who... Um, 
was taken to the hospital here and then was taken to Duke and she is still in Duke. And while we're remembering her, we want to remember her husband as well. We want to remember the Reverend Shelton Anderson who normally is here with us, uh, but this morning duty calls for him to preach. And so our prayer is that God will bless him as he stands on the holy mountain as he ministers under the unction of the Holy Spirit. I want to remember in prayer the Reverend Mary Anderson as well as the Reverend Cora McDowell uh, that God will touch their bodies. I want to remember in prayer Sister Lavasha Williams. We prayed for her in times past. She had major surgery and um, her mother shared with me that uh, last week she was released from the hospital and then took sick and had to return. So might we keep her in our prayers as well as her family. I want to remember in prayer um, Mother Zelma Kaysen as well as Brother Michael Perry. Brother Michael Perry um, was on life support and now uh, he is in ICU. And I want to remember in prayer the Reverend Dr. Lawrence Johnson. And might I say thank you for remembering my sister last week in prayer. And I'm sure that she would have me to say keep praying for her. She's under Dr. Skier, Sister Juanita Ratliff, and she is improving day by day. May the Lord bless you as you pray for these persons and as you pray for even yourselves, your community, this community, North Carolina, as well as the United States, as well as war-torn countries. Amen. And while we're praying, might we pray for the honor of Terry Garrison and all of those House of Representative persons and uh, senators uh, at the state level as well as at the national level who represent us. Might we pray for our president and might we pray for this country. There's a whole lot that's going on in this country and it's not all good but in the midst of it all Amen. God is still in charge Amen. so we who are the righteous the prayers of the righteous according to the holy script the prayers of the righteous availeth much yes. might we pray because this is certainly a praying time at this time the honorable Terry Garrison uh, who's a deacon here at Shiloh and a part of the house of representatives for North Carolina who represents our area he wants to come to help us Thank you, Reverend Reverend. I'm going to ask uh, Deacon Keith Taylor, uh, Trustee Edith Carroll, and Deacon Michael Anderson to come stand with him, please. I'm going to ask Pastor Reverend to come join us, please. Yes. On behalf of the deacons, trustees, budget committee, all other officers of Shadow Baptist Church and members, we would like to pay tribute to you and to recognize you this morning for three reasons. One, for uh, having been our pastor for some 27 years, and secondly, for having Led us through uh, the coronavirus pandemic, and even we're still in it, but we transitioned from in person service to, to remote, and we didn't miss a beat. And uh, the services that we've been rendering that would get beyond the walls of Shadow by way of technology through YouTube. And um, so, and also, uh, we want to recognize you uh, for uh, here on, on Father's Day. So, uh, as such, we want to uh, present you with a very, very special gift that represents uh, three things. One, it's, it's an honorarium. Secondly, it is a bonus. And thirdly, it is a Father's Day gift. We want to just express to you our appreciation and love for what you've done for us here at Shadow. We appreciate you. We want to bless you, your wife, and your son. God continues to bless you, but that you will continue to bless us. Amen. 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 <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Bless you. Bless your heart. And bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much to the officers of Shiloh as well as to the disciples of Shiloh as well as to the friends of Shiloh. Thank you for all of your prayers, for all of your thoughts, for all of your kind deeds, for all the many things that you have done and for the many things that you continue to do. May the Lord bless you for being such a blessing to me. And I realize that during COVID, it doesn't matter where one has trained. Seminary does not pro provide the training for pandemic. Uh, amen. It just doesn't do it, y'all. It doesn't do it. It uh, doesn't matter whether you have top quality education or no education. It just doesn't provide for it. Uh, but God, and because you are praying people and because you are willing to follow leadership, thanks be to God that we have been able to do the things that we've been able to do. And because many of you have plugged the halls, uh, and you've not missed a beat, and you've held up my arms, and you've lifted me up in prayer. So God's blessings be upon you, and I rejoice with you for great things that God has done, and for even the greater things that God is going to do. Amen. 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 Now let's worship. Almighty and everlasting Father, we thank you for another day of worship. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this Father's Day. We thank you, dear God. For those who have gathered in the sanctuary as well as for those lord who are joining us virtually we thank you dear god for those who thought it not robbery to come and sit in this service with their father or with their grandfather or with their uncle or with their brother or with some man maybe even a man of god who has impacted their life and we thank you god because we realize that um, in and of ourselves none of us can do anything and none of us can be anything but because you have blessed us with women and you blessed us with men and you blessed us with uh, youth and you blessed us with young adults and you blessed us with seniors and you blessed us with each other, we're able, Heavenly Father, uh, to lift up you and to lift up each other and to be supportive of the same. So God, we say thank you. Thank you for another day's journey. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that on this Juneteenth weekend, we as black people can say that we are free. We are not in shackles and chains, and we are not standing on auction blocks. And, uh, we have rights and privileges. Oh God, although we can say we are free, we realize that there are still those of our people and people in general who are still shackled, shackled by the pressures and, and by the evils of society, shackled by racism and shackled, oh God, by, by, by lack of economic power and resources, shackled, Heavenly Father, by the habits of life, shackled, God, uh, because of low, low self-esteem and or no self-esteem. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will send a fresh anointing. And, oh, Lord, that you will use each of us individually and use us collectively to be the church of Jesus Christ, to impact our people in our homes, to impact people in our families, to impact people, oh God, in our communities, to impact people on our jobs, to impact people wherever we go. And oh God, wherever we go, our prayer is that the light of Jesus will shine and that somebody will know that there's a difference in us, not because we are who we are, but there's a difference in us because of who stands up in us. Lord, there are some this morning who need new strength. There are some who need a higher height. There are some who need a deeper debt. There are some, Heavenly Father, who are doing all that they know to do, and their, their best is just not good enough. Oh, God, these are challenging times. These are times that try the hearts and souls of, of people who even want to do right. But, oh, God, in the midst of it all, my prayer is that you will help us all to look to the hills from which cometh all of our help, because all of our help does come from you. 
Father, we pray this morning, especially for those who have gathered in this sanctuary and for those who are joining us through YouTube and Facebook and live streaming, we pray especially this morning, Heavenly Father, for those who say, Lord, it's me standing in the need of prayer. We pray especially for those who are part of bereaved families, those who are incarcerated, those who are in mental institutions, those, Heavenly Father, who are homeless, those who are motherless and fatherless, sisterless and brotherless. We pray especially this morning, God, for those who have told us when you pray just pray for me God we pray especially for those who are doing all that they know to do and they're struggling they're struggling they're struggling with this economy but God we know that you're above it all and we know that that the earth is yours and the fullness thereof so God we're believing that you and only you can provide father we pray right now in the name of Jesus that you will bless us as we worship you this day in spirit and in truth and Lord, we pray, we pray uh, that the songs will bless us. We pray that the prayers will bless us. We pray that your spoken word will bless us. And then, God, when we go from this place that is called Shiloh, that, oh God, we will be your blessing. Father, we pray right now that you will move from heart to heart and from breast to breast. Bless every home that is represented here, every individual concern and every matter. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will move by your Holy Spirit. And God, when we come to the close of this service and we go from this place, let us not just say we went to Shiloh, but Lord, help us to be able to say we've been with the Lord. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed us, feed us, Jesus, feed us until we want no more. And God, if you do it, and I know you will, we'll give you all the glory, we'll give you all the honor, and we'll give you all the praise. We ask this not in my name, not in our name, but we ask this in the name of Jesus, the Christ we pray. And the people of God said, Amen, Amen, Amen. For our scripture, we want to turn to the first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 22. Verses 1 and 2, Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 and 2. And I'm sharing from the way the Living Bible illustrated Genesis chapter 22, only two verses, 1 and 2, from the Living Bible illustrated. Later on, God tests Abraham's faith and Abraham's obedience. Abraham, God called, yes, Lord. He replied, take with you your only son, yes, Isaac, whom you love so much, and go to the land of Moriah and sacrifice him there as a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I'll point out to you. This is the word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Thanks be to the Lord. Amen. There is
come in since we have begun in worship and some of you have not had the opportunity to stand up and look around and turn around so this is your opportunity <laughs> to stand and look around and wave and give somebody a smile even with your mask on this might be the only smile that they will get and wish somebody happy father's day to tell somebody in your own way that you love them because somebody needs to hear that in the name of the lord amen here we are on this the Lord's Day, uh, the third Sunday of June, June 10th weekend, and we are celebrating Father's Day. And there are some fathers, of course, who rest in the great beyond. There are some fathers uh, whose steps now have grown slow. Their eyes have gotten a little dim. And in a little while, they will join those on the other side. There are some fathers who are just starting out. There are some fathers who are along the middle of their journey. Even so, we wish all the fathers a happy Father's Day. Today is Father's Day, and while dads are not uh, in fatherhood given all the credit for all the things that they do, and dads are not in fatherhood for the credit that they can get, three and four dads feel stressed trying to juggle work and family life. Three and four fathers. And so, if this is the statistic for three and four fathers, just imagine what it is for black fathers. <laughs> three and four fathers. They don't talk about it, but they really, really struggle. And black fathers who especially um, wrestle with trying to provide and trying to be there and trying to do what is right they seriously struggle with trying to juggle on one hand work and quality time and family time on the other hand. Many men, and especially many black men, suffer alone. And many men, and, and especially many black men. So I'm going to put a plug in for the, for the men, the black men. If you don't say amen any other time, this is your day. <laughs> you don't say amen and toot your own horn, you in trouble. Amen. Many men, especially many black men, suffer alone, and so they feel misunderstood and underappreciated, as well as stressed, vulnerable, and overwhelmed as they seek to be the best father and in the best relationship that they can be in. Fathers, good fathers, are like the sun in the sky, and I want to talk about the strength of a good father. Fathers, good fathers, are like the sun in the sky. They give warmth and they give life. However, they are often not thought about unless the sun goes missing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> unless they go missing. Mm -hmm. They're just taken for granted. Yeah. Pop culture. Mm -hmm. Hear me. Pop culture does not appreciate dads. All right. Pop culture does not appreciate dads. Sitcoms make fun of dads and often present them as irresponsible and senseless when it comes to taking care of children. Mm -hmm. They act like men, dads, don't have sense enough to wipe a baby's mouth, don't have sense enough to change a baby's diaper, right. don't have sense enough to feed a baby, don't have sense enough to take care of children. Sitcoms present dads as careless and clueless as to what to do for a baby, what to do for a toddler, or even what to do for a child. Mm -hmm. And if you pay attention to the entertainment world, the entertainment world has a view, and that view is only mom knows best. Uh -huh. Dads are so incompetent mm -hmm. that they do not make good babysitters. Mm -hmm. This is what dads, and especially black dads, are wrestling with not just out there, but in their own homes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Irma Bumbeck, an American humanist, wrote an article on Father's Day reflecting on Father's Day as a young girl. Right. She pondered over the question, my friends, what do dads do all day long? when she was a youngster. And maybe some of you have wondered that, or maybe some of you, like others, you never wondered. But she pondered over the question much later in life, what does dad do all day long? And as she reflected on her father, this is what she recalls. One morning, my father didn't get up for work. As a matter of fact, he went to the hospital and he died the very next day. 
as an adult looking back into my childhood. This is uh, Irma Bombeck telling her story. As a matter of fact, after my dad went to the hospital and he died, it was only then that I started processing just what did my father do all day? Just who was my father? As an adult looking back into my childhood, I hadn't even thought very much about what my dad did when I was growing up. I merely recall that he was just someone who left home in the morning and got home real late at night. And I believe that that's the story of many men, and especially many black men, who try to take care of their family. And so they are absent from the home because they realize that for them to provide for the family, they can't be in the home. They got to get out and work one job, two jobs, and sometimes three jobs. And so she goes on, I recall that my dad was just somebody who left home real early in the morning and came back late at night. And when he finally came home, he was just glad to see everybody. <laughs> After being gone all day, he was given the job of doing what nobody else could do. Mm -hmm. Hey dad, we couldn't open this job. Please open it, because you have the strength. Mm -hmm. Hey dad, we realize you just came in, but the stool is hung. And the doorknob is broken. We were ripping and running through the house. And nobody else has taken an interest in it. And nobody else can fix it. Will you please fix it? Because it needs to be fixed. Mm -hmm. Hey, Dad. Mm -hmm. We're so glad that you have come home. Because the lights went out. And all of us are scared. Will you go down into the basement where, where, where the, the, the circuit breaker can be reset? Or find the problem as to why there's no power in this house? She goes on, Irma Bumbeck, and says, my dad would shave and he would cut himself, but nobody got excited mm. or even kissed his cuts and bruises. Right. Whenever it snowed, my dad would shovel the snow from around our vehicle and he cleared off the walkway all the way from the porch to the street. But nobody really act like he had done anything because after all, that is what dads are supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Whenever it would rain, my dad would hold his umbrella up over everybody so that he would make sure that nobody else would good, get wet, although he would get wet. Mm -hmm. When anybody got sick, Daddy would call to the drugstore, and then he'd go to the drugstore to get the prescription. As I recall, my dad took lots of pictures, but he was in very, very few of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The strength of a good father. Well, she goes on, and this is what she says, and I want you to hear this part. I vividly recall when I was growing up, I played house. Any of you ever play house when you were growing up? Mm -hmm. I played house. This is what she says. I played house. I had a mama doll and I had a daddy doll. And they were the parents of all the stuffed animals. And all the stuffed animals were the children. Mm -hmm. The mama doll was always busy. She was cleaning. She was cooking. She was sewing. And she was checking on the children. But I never quite knew what to do with the daddy doll. <laughs> so this is what I had my daddy doll to say. Honey, I'm gone. Have a good day. I'll see you tonight when I get off my second job. And for the remainder of the time that I played house, the daddy doll was out of the picture. I threw the daddy doll up under the bed. As a matter of fact, I didn't pull the daddy doll out until way by and by. <laughs> My friends, for many children and adults too, their father is something of a mystery. Yeah. <laughs> Only as they have grown older have they grown into maturity to appreciate all the sacrifices that a good father makes. Mm -hmm. Isn't it sad that we have to wait to get old before we can finally say, oh, you mean daddy did all that? And in many instances, many of these dads are gone. Mm -hmm. Think with me. Perhaps your father was gone all day and half the night because he worked two or three jobs so he could pay the mortgage. Mm -hmm. Maybe he was gone all day and all night so each child could have his or her own room. 
Maybe he was gone all, all day and half the night so the family would have a vehicle to drive. Maybe he was gone all day and half the night so the children would have plenty to eat. Maybe, just maybe, y'all. This dad was gone all day and half tonight. So, 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 each child would have decent clothes to wear. Maybe. Yeah. He was gone all day and half tonight. So the lights and the water and the telephone and the heat would never be turned off. Mm -hmm. Maybe. He was gone. So the child or the children would be able to go on field trips, school field trips, or be able to participate in school and community activities which cost somebody something. Yeah. Yeah. Perhaps your father was gone all day and half the night so the family would be able to take a trip once a year. Yeah. Perhaps your father was gone not because he wanted to, but because old man need said he had to. Yeah, yeah. The bills kept coming and coming and coming and somebody had to pay them. Perhaps your dad was gone a lot of those times when he felt sick and when he felt exhausted, but he loved you so much yeah, yeah. that he was motivated to go even when he was not feeling well, just so you would not go without. Yeah. I'm talking about the strength of a father. I, I want somebody to see this picture. And I don't have proper painting it. I want somebody to see this picture because fathers, and especially black fathers, are not given their due. Black fathers are not given their due. Fathers in general are not given their due. So we need to, we need to talk about the strength of a black father. Perhaps your dad was gone a lot of those times. Gone all those times and he didn't even have gas money in his pocket or didn't have lunch money in his pocket, but he never told you because that was not something that you would understand as a child and fathers got to do what fathers got to do even when it includes working long hours or backbreaking and even dangerous work. A loving father will do whatever he has to do to protect his family yeah, yeah. from poverty yeah. and to meet the needs. Even if the job is boring, mm -hmm. even if the job is repetitive, even if the job is tedious, which drains his spirit, a loving father does it out of love. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to drive home the point, my friends, that our culture places very, very, very little value on the role of a father from pop culture to media, even to government policy. There are still some good fathers in the world. Don't fool yourself. There are still some good fathers in the world. And I will be the first to admit that there are still some good black fathers. In the world. I will be the first to admit that some fathers are good fathers, but they choose little gods in the place of God Almighty, and their lives end up in tragedy. I will be the first to admit that some fathers are courageous, but they choose the wrong gods too. Some fathers are strong men, but they are weak in their belief in God. They have not learned that courage alone is not enough to sustain them as a father. But I will also be the first to acknowledge and to admit the first to acknowledge and admit that there are still some praying fathers. Amen. There are still some dedicated fathers. All fathers aren't dogs. Yeah. There are still some fathers who are men after God's own heart. Yeah. There are still some fathers who have a relationship yeah. with their family, but more importantly, a relationship with God. And they understand that wherever God guides them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God provides for them. Uh -huh. There are fathers 
who believe that before God promotes us, then we have to first pass the test. And that's why they don't cry. That's why they don't whimper. That's why they don't complain. Because they know that as they go through life, life is only a test. Yeah, yeah. And we got to pass the test. There are still fathers who understand on a spiritual level that God does not always reveal his plan in full, and that's all right. all right. I don't have to know all the details. I don't have to know it. But as long as God says so, yes, yes. that's sufficient. There are still God-fearing fathers, my friends who trust God. Mm -hmm. And because they trust in God, they know that their trust in God affects their families. They know that their trust in God, it has its way of flowing down to their family. Yeah. The strength of a good father. Yeah. Story is told of a young man and a young woman, and they were in love with each other. Mm -hmm. They set a wedding day. And as the wedding day approached, both of them got a little apprehensive about going on with the wedding. Should I, shouldn't I, should I, shouldn't I? Should I, shouldn't I? I don't know if I should or if I shouldn't. They got apprehensive because both of them had problems that they had never shared with each other. And they had problems that they had never shared with anyone, not even their parents. The young man went to his father So dad, mm -hmm. I need a piece of advice. I'm about to get married, but I got a serious problem. I'm afraid that if my fiance now finds out about my problem, that she won't marry me. And the father's just looking at his son like, what in the world? What in the world? What in the world? So the father asked, what's your problem, son? Mm -hmm. And the son said, I have smelly feet. <laughs> That's a problem. Yes, I washed him and I washed him and I washed him, but when I take my shoes off at night, <laughs> even to me, they smell awful. And the father said, No problem. The wisdom of a father, y'all. Mm -hmm. The wisdom of a father. You're not the first one who has had smelly feet, and you won't be the last one. No problem, no problem. All you have to do, son, is wash your feet real good, soak them real good, as often as possible, and whatever you do, always wear socks. Change your socks regularly, and every night when you get ready to go to bed, put socks on your feet. That'll take care of your problem. Son said, thanks, Dad. Well, the bride-to-be, she went to her dad and she said, Dad, I have a real, real serious problem. I got a problem that I've not told anybody about. Not even the man whom I'm about to marry. Every morning when I awaken, I have some real sneaking breath. And the father said, baby, everybody has bad breath when they first get up in the morning. The daughter said, no, 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 you don't understand. My breath is so bad that I would surely run my husband off with it. I'm afraid that he would not even want to sleep with me or even be in the same room with me. I need to do something about my bad breath. This is what the father said. That problem can be fixed. Mm -hmm. Baby, this is what I want you to try. In the morning, the moment that your eyes open, don't say anything to anybody. <laughs> I mean it. <laughs> don't say anything to anybody. The moment that your eyes open, go straight from the bed to the bathroom and brush your teeth and goggle and goggle. And remember this, do not say anything before you go straight to the bathroom and brush your teeth. Well, the young man with stinking feet and the young woman with bad breath, stinking breath, they got married. And each of them did what their father had told them. The loving couple, they got married. And the first month, everything went real well. 
The second month, everything went perfectly. The third month, everything went very well. And the fourth month, everything went perfectly. And the fifth month, everything went real, real well. Mm -hmm. But the sixth month came. And the husband had a real bad dream. When he awakened from his dream, he was kicking. And as he thought, he could feel his foot touching the sheep. And the sock was not on his foot because he had been kicking in his sleep. He sat up in the bed. One of the socks is missing. That's what he thought. He sat up and he kept feeling around trying to find that sock with hopes of putting the sock back on his smelly foot before his wife awakened. Needless to say, reaching under the cover, pulling the cover, lifting up the cover, letting air up under the cover, searching, searching, trying to find that sock but not being able to find that sock, the wife awakened. And she saw him searching frantically for something and without thinking. <laughs> she asked, what are you doing? What on earth are you looking for, dear? And the husband gasped and shot, oh no, you must have swallowed my sock. <laughs> Father say. The strength of a good father. Let's look at our text and we'll be out of here. We're all familiar with Abraham. Mm -hmm. It appears that Abraham has had one crisis after another and that really is the lot of men and especially black men. That is the lot of women and especially black women. That is the lot of God's people and especially God's people who have an anointing on them. If it's not one thing, then it's something else and something else and something else. Sometimes trouble comes two by two and sometimes trouble comes four by four. And so Abraham found that there's one crisis after another. Abram's first crisis was when God called him to leave home and to leave his family. Do what, God? You say, leave home and leave my family, leave the familiar. God says to Abram, hey, Abram, I want you to leave your country. Get out of your country. I want you to leave, leave your people. Get away from all your people. I want you to leave your father's house. I want you to go to a land that I will show you. God went on to tell Abram that the entire world would be blessed because of him. The Bible declares that Abram departed as the Lord destructed him. He was 75 years old when he left home. All right. Try that on for size. <laughs> <laughs> and he took his wife. He took his wealth. He took his nephew, Lot, because he had nothing else. No other son, no other child. He eventually arrived in Egypt because there was a famine in the land. And prior to arriving in Egypt, he told his wife at that time, who was known as Sarah, to lie, to lie, to lie. And tell the Egyptians, especially the Egyptian leaders, that Abram was her brother instead of her husband. After all, if he were her brother, then the Egyptians would spare his life. But if he were her husband, then they would probably kill him so they could have this beautiful woman for themselves. Abram was given many gifts and Sarah was taken into the household of Pharaoh. She did just what Abram told her to do. When they asked, are you all husband? No, no, we're not husband and wife. We don't roll like that. That's my brother. And so they took Sarah to Pharaoh's house. God was not pleased, so God sent a plague over Pharaoh's household. And needless to say, Sarah was returned to Abram. Mm -hmm. You'd think that that would be the end of Abram and Sarah's crisis. Mm -hmm. But then another crisis occurred. Lot, who is the nephew, 
Remember, Abram and Sarai do not have any children, but they have much affluence and they have a nephew who is holding on to them, clinging on to them, who is the only family that is with them. Lot was very wealthy and so was Abram. They were so wealthy that the land could not handle both of their cattle, all of their cattle and all of their herds. Both of them were so affluent that the pasture just couldn't even feed all the herds of Abram and all the cattle of Abram and, 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 and the, the, the land couldn't even feed the cattle and the herds of Lot. Mm -hmm. So there's not enough pasture for mm. Lot and his cattle and herds, and for Abram and his cattle and herds, and fights even broke out between Abram's herdsmen and Lot's herdsmen. So now they've got to separate. All right. Lot chose to go east, and his uncle Abram chose to go west. A war broke out in Lot's territory, and all that Lot had was taken from him. He, and even Lot was taken as a prisoner of war. And when word got to Abram, Abram being a man, being used by God, Abram took 318 men and he fought getting back all of Lot's possessions and even freeing Lot. Well. God kept telling Abram how wealthy he'd become and how great he'd become. And Abram said, look, God, what good is all this wealth? What good is all this affluence? And I do not even have a son to inherit it. Some other family member will inherit all this that you are promising me. Time marched on and Sarah and Abram still had no children. So Sarah yeah. took her handmaid, her maid, an Egyptian named Hagar, and gave Hagar to Abram to be his second wife. Hagar had a son by Abram named Ishmael. Yeah. And when Abram was 99, God changed his name from Abram to Abraham, father of nation. And he changed Sarah's name uh, as well at that time from Sarah to Sarah. God tells Abraham that Sarah is going to have a son. She's going to have a baby. Uh, and, and, and this baby will be the son of promise. And Abraham tells God, just bless Ishmael. I'm too old to start over with a baby. Just bless Ishmael and I'll be happy. Just bless Ishmael. Let him be the son of promise. And God says no. At the right age of 100, Abraham became father yeah. to Isaac. Yeah. And Sarah was 90 when she gave birth. Ishmael, who was 14 years older. Yeah. When Isaac was born, he teased and he taunted him. And Sarah said, this boy will not be sharing any inheritance with my son. He and his mama, Hagar, they got to go, Abraham. That's crisis number three. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For Abraham, Ishmael, Abraham's son, can no longer live with his father. Sounds like what we see today, doesn't it? He is sent away. Yeah. Yeah. One would think that finally Abraham is going to have nothing but happy days with Sarah, whom he loved, and Isaac, whom he definitely loved. Isaac was a gift. Isaac was a promise. Isaac is Abraham's beloved son, whom God gave to him when he's 100 years old. If anything is going to become an idol to Abraham, it's not going to be Sarah. It's not going to be Hagar. It's not going to be Ishmael. If anything is going to become an idol to Abraham, it's going to be Isaac. Yeah. 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 Right when Sarah when Sarah looked and Abraham looked and Isaac looked and they couldn't be any happier. Everything's going fine. That other woman, Hagar, is out the picture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that other child, not my child, Ishmael, his child, yeah. out the picture. It's just now us, mm -hmm. Abraham, mm -hmm. Sarah, yeah. and Isaac. And we are one happy family. Right when 
Everything seems like it's working great. Mm -hmm. Another crisis comes. Yeah. God presents another crisis. I told you crisis one, crisis two, crisis three. Now we are on crisis four. God presents the fourth crisis and tell Abraham, I know you love this boy, Isaac, but now you've got to sacrifice your only son, your only other son. You've got to sacrifice your seed. You've got to sacrifice Isaac. This does not make sense, y'all. Why would God give Abraham a chosen son at 100, the apple of his eye, the joy of his strength. And then God says, but now you got to kill him. How could God have waited all these years to make Abraham and Sarah parents take and take away their joy and laughter by ordering Abraham to take his beloved son Isaac to a mountain to kill him, to slit his throat like one would butcher a goat? How in the world would God yeah. come up with a plan like that? Why would God want Abraham at the age of 110 years old to butcher his innocent son? Isaac hasn't done anything. Mm -hmm. Butcher your son, Abraham, and let the blood run down from his neck all over his body. And as his corpse is cremated, present him as an offering unto me. Abraham is a good father. Yeah. But he has to see nothing but confusion. You can be the best father that there is, but there are some things in life just don't make sense. Right. He's a good father. But he has to see things as they really are. This looks like confusion to me. He's a good father. But his heart has become so heavy that it is about to break. And yet, Abraham shows no reluctance. Abraham doesn't argue with God. Abraham doesn't hesitate. He says, come on, boy. God said, we got to do it. We got to take a three-day trip. Abraham was willing to carry out the marching orders of God. And we all know that Abraham is being tested. Yeah. However, Abraham does not know that he's being tested. The strength of a good father. The Lord wanted to know from Abraham. And he wants to know from each and every one of us. Whatever happens, do you trust me? Whatever happens in your life, do you trust me? Whatever you face today, do you trust me? Whatever goes down tonight... Do you trust me? God wants to know in the relationship that we have with him. Do you trust me? Whatever happens, do you believe that I can fulfill my promise? Whatever happens, will you obey me and serve me even when it doesn't make sense? When you see only confusion, can you trust me? When your heart is mighty heavy, can you trust me? Even when you seek his presence, but do not feel his presence. Can you trust God? As a father or a mother or a child, you need to hear me say, God doesn't need to see if we can handle whatever comes our way. God doesn't need to see uh, if we can handle what comes our way. God does not need to allow trials or tests to come our way so that he will know what we will do. God already knows what we will do. So then, preacher, Explain to me why is it that I have my share of trials? Why is it that I have my share of tribulations? Why is it that I have my share of ups and downs? If God is not testing me so God can see what I'm going to do. God already knows. If God already knows uh, what we will do, why is God testing me? God allows trials and God allows tests. And God allows circumstances to come our way so that we yes. can see for ourselves if we can handle it. Somebody needs to hear me say that it is not our weaknesses that God is concerned with. It is our heart that God is concerned with. It's our heart that God is after. The strength of a good father is found in this text. God never wanted Isaac's life. I want you to get that. Because the way I presented the text, 
it appears that God wanted Isaac's life. No, 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 that's not true. God never wanted Isaac's life. What God wanted was Abraham's total allegiance. What God wanted was Abraham's total attention. Abraham is expected to be willing to give up that which he loves, and his love is tested through his being called to do something that does not make sense. What? Abraham complete, co concluded that God was able, then God made all the provision. If you ever can get to the point of recognizing and realizing that God is able, yeah. that's all you got to do. Yeah. Get to that corner and say, God is able. God is able. Yeah. If you can ever get through your trouble, yeah. ever get through your trouble, yeah. ever get through your circumstances, and say, God is able. Yeah. You can ever get there. If you can never get there, uh, if you can ever get there, God is able, then God will make all the provisions. If you believe he's able, he will do what he said he'll do. Abraham knew that God could raise Isaac from the dead if need be. Abraham knew that God could stop him from killing his son if need be, his son whom he loved so much, and that God could provide a lamb if God willed it to be so. The strength of a good father is rooted in the fact that God cares about each and every one of us. And whatever God does, it will always be. I said it will always be. It will always be for the best of our interest. Yeah. The strength of a good father is rooted in we can't grow without pain. And we can't have a testimony without a test. And we can't have success without a willingness to sacrifice. Good fathers are men of action. Good fathers are men who prepare children for adulthood. Good fathers are men who take responsibility for their action. Good fathers are men who serve the Lord. Good fathers help reach the masses by spreading the word. I can trust God even when things look bad. Good fathers help reach the masses by spreading the word. I can trust God even when I'm hurt. Good fathers help reach the masses by spreading the word. I can trust God even when I have no idea what God is up to or what God is doing. Good fathers, yeah, 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 engage in the life of your children, all your children, and encourage them to be Christ's followers. As a dad, we are more than protectors. God has called us to be spiritual leaders. Dads, you may not get the credit that you deserve down here. It might appear that you're not even valued for who you are or what you do. Just do what you know is right to do because if when you give the best of your service, tell me the word that the Savior has come. Be that dismayed when men don't believe. God will understand and say well done. All of us need to leave here on this Father's Day. Leave here being mindful that it is easier to build strong children than to prepare broken men and women. Yeah. We need to leave here. If your father never did anything for you, you need to leave here seeking to transform that pain. Otherwise, you'll transfer it to your very own son or your very own daughter. Regardless of what your earthly father has or has not done, all of us, I said all of us, all of us have a heavenly father. We are our Heavenly Father's children, and we all know that He loves us one and all. We are our Heavenly Father's children, and our Heavenly Father loves us very much. A Heavenly Father whose love can redeem any pain. A Heavenly Father who sacrificed His only Son for each and every one of us one Friday. A Heavenly Father who's watching over us all day. And all night, a heavenly father who's leading us and guiding us. A heavenly father, I tell you, it's no secret that some mothers have stayed in homes and stayed in relationships because of the children. But I've come to serve notice, so have some of the fathers. It's no secret that some mothers and children can truly say that they prayed their way through. But I've come to serve the church notice. So have some of the fathers. It's no secret. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Father, if you have no might, 
If you have no strength, you need to just ask the Savior yeah. to help you. I realize that some of you fathers, some of you mothers, and even some of you children, you almost let go. Some of you have let go of the bull horns of the altar. I realize that the trials of life can press down on your shoulders. I realize that sometimes the sacrifices that we make, they hardly seem appreciated. Ah, I just come to say to you, you hang in there. You hang in there. If your father, you hang in there. If your mother, you hang in there. If your child, you hang in there. If you're a child of God on Father's Day, you hang in there. Hang in there until hanging days are done. And so I've come to say to you, if you need more strength, God is the one to give you the strength that you need. If you need more power, God is the one to give you the power that you need. If you need more love, God is the one to give you the love that you need. If you need a higher height and a deeper depth, God is the one to give you what you need. If you need peace in the midst of confusion, God, God is the one to give you what you need. God is the one. So fathers, emulate your heavenly father. Do what is right. Do what is right. The children need us. Not just our biological children, but the children. Yes. Yes. The children yes. need us. Yes. We do not need to be absent. Mm -hmm. We need to stand in the gap. Yes. And that father who has drifted off, we need to stand in the gap. For that father who's dead and gone, we need to stand in the gap. Yeah, yeah. For that father who's weary, we need to stand in the gap. For that father who's thrown in the towel and walked away, we need to stand in the gap. The strength of a father, to put it simply, is to work on being like Jesus. Yeah. To work on being like God. Mm -hmm. And as our Heavenly Father provides for us something that's supposed to happen to us to make us want to provide for others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The strength of a father is wrapped up, tied up, and tainted up. Letting God be God and surrendering to the will of God. May the Lord bless you. May he strengthen you. May he keep you. And I'll say to you, don't stop praying. Don't stop living. Don't stop believing. Don't stop trusting. I don't care what comes. It might be crisis after crisis after crisis after crisis, as was in this text. Hang in there. Hang in there. God already knows that he has given you and me and us, males and females alike, children as well, who are covered under the blood of Jesus. He's given us what we need. Not just to barely make it, but to make it. And one day we'll join all those on the other side. And they will say about us like we've said about those who have gone before. These are they. Wash their robes in the blood of the Lamb. And now, both night and day, they cry, holy, holy, holy. Lamb of God who was slain. Oh Lord, we thank you for fathers, the earthly fathers that you have blessed us with. And we thank you for those who have plugged the holes, those who have given of themselves, not because they had to, but because they wanted to. Thank you for, even if it were somebody else's father, 
for that father believing in us. Thank you for that father, even if it were somebody else's father, who took time with us to nurture us, to share fatherhood with us. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for even the many fathers who rest in the great beyond, those who rest with you, who made great sacrifices. And Lord, maybe we didn't get a chance to tell them thank you. But after this sermon, we're well aware they didn't get their right for due from us. We just took for granted all the things that they did, all the sacrifices that they made. So God, because they rest with you, we say thank you now for their paving the way, for their sacrificing. And even as we said on Mother's Day, dear God, if they could come back and if we could ask the question, how much do I owe you? These fathers who have sacrificed everything, who sacrificed everything, would say, you don't owe me anything. All that I did, I did out of love. Father, help us to pass on the love that has been passed on to us. Help us to turn this cold, mean dog world upside down. Help us to not be satisfied until we get out of our comfort zones and reach the fatherless and the motherless and the hurting children and reach those, Lord, who haven't been given a chance or an opportunity. Help us, God, to be mothers and fathers, to be sisters and brothers, to those who are all alone. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. The doors of the church are open. If there's a man, woman, boy, or girl who desires to unite this church by one another Christian experience, in the way the gospel says, come, the doors are open as we have a selection.
utilize this day to take the time to enjoy each other and appreciate each other and to think on these things. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you and give you peace in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. And the people of God said amen. 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 Go in peace and serve the Lord and have a happy Father's Day. Amen.